Most of you might be familiar with HARP, an early experiment in trying to control the ionosphere, to control radio propagation. Well, in, that's not the first experiment that was done. In the 1950s, the early 1950s, the Cold War was at its peak, and the primary means of global communications for the military was undersea cables and HF radio. Now, cables can be cut, and radio is completely under the influence of propagation, which is controlled by the sun. Solar storms could disrupt it. It can be jammed. Um, it's just not reliable. And they were looking for a more reliable means of communication. So around 1958, at MIT's Lincoln Labs, which is a research station on Hanson Air Force Base northwest of Boston, Project Needles as it was originally known, was initiated. It was the idea of one Walter E. Murrow, one of the leading scientists in that group. The idea was to put an orbiting ring of copper threads above the Earth. And these threads could be used as a reflector to reflect signals back down reliably. These copper threads, or needles, uh, were about 1.8 centimeters in length. That's about half the wavelength of the roughly 8 gigahertz transmission signal that they were going to use for communications. Here you can see them, some of them pictured next to a stamp uh, to give you an idea of the size. Tiny, tiny little things. Uh, satellites were developed that would deploy the needles. Here's a picture of one of the satellites on exhibit. A ring of about 480 million of these little copper dipole antennas uh, were launched in 1961. Now this first attempt failed. Uh, the needles failed to disperse properly. They had a second launch. In 1963, this launch was a success. The copper needles were dispersed above the earth and created the artificial ring. And it worked. They were able to reliably communicate by reflecting signals off this ring. Now, the way that they worked is the little dipoles would resonate and re-radiate the, uh, the RF. Um, but, you know, it just didn't last very long. The needles were placed in a medium Earth orbit, about uh, 2,000 to 2,400 miles above the Earth. And this is basically a field of orbital debris. Uh, two factors killed the project. One, uh, there were worldwide protests from scientists. The U.S. was creating this layer up there that's now uninhabitable by other satellites because of all of the debris. 480 million of these little copper threads up there zinging around the Earth are like little bullets. Any satellite that went through that region would just be shredded. Uh, there were protests worldwide. Groups of scientists, even the Soviet newspaper Pravda, um, had a, an article headlined, U.S. Dirties Space. I've searched for that, <laughs> for that article. I can't find it. I wish I could have put a picture up of it. Um, the other problem was that over time, the needles had begun to clump up again. Uh, gravity and attraction and the magnetic field of the Earth were drawing them together and they were clumping up and the signal levels were dropping. Um, it was becoming less and less useful. By the late 60s, uh, the project was, had been pretty much uh, shelved, had been abandoned. Um, other forms of communication were beginning to take over satellites. And then, of course, in the 1970s, ARPANET, which would eventually become the Internet. So more reliable versions of communication uh, had become available. Now, what happened to all those copper needles up there above the Earth? Well, as of 2016, there's 38 clumps still in orbit that are being tracked as space junk by NORAD and, and DARPA. Uh, they're still there. Most of them, though, have fallen back to Earth. Now, they're so small that they don't burn up when they re-enter the atmosphere. And, interestingly, they follow the Earth's magnetic fields, so most of them were attracted towards the poles where they have fallen and are still sitting under the snow around the polar regions. So that was the experiment, the artificial ring that scientists created back in the 1960s around the Earth that sort of worked. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.